incredible sound of a war instrument, the shrieking almost of these scales running up, then being played the same by violins and normal instruments, instruments that people recognize as art instruments, made trumpet players king in the Baroque period. Once we started off in 1600 to 1750, Baroque music was when trumpet players were the superstars of the day. They were the highest paid musicians. They were the most famous musicians. But the problem is, as trumpet players, we kept our techniques all secret. So it was almost like a birthright to become a trumpet player. You had to be born into a family of trumpet players, or you had to be in a separate little special club or a guild where all the secrets were kind of kept. Eventually, that kind of meant that trumpet playing died out towards the end of this Baroque period. But what happened in the middle of it was just our most massive, huge time. It was the golden age of the trumpet. And apart from that, the sackbuts kind of almost took a back step. They were still playing away in churches and doing little things, but they really took a back step. But it was trumpet that was the king in the Baroque period. The piece that we've got for you in the Baroque period is the Jeremiah Clark Prince of Denmark's March. And this would have been written to celebrate the Prince of Denmark coming for a visit to London, probably to St. Paul's Cathedral, and he would have walked in to this massive big tune. You'll hear the same kind of thing today whenever there's anything royal happens, any coronation or anything like that. We have these big trumpets playing and we get this glorious big fanfare and this really festive Christmassy sound. Baroque wasn't just the name for music, it was also the name for drama, architecture, dance, literature. The name Baroque, it comes from the word Barocco, which is Portuguese for a strangely odd-shaped pearl. And it's a very elaborate time. Everything was elaborate. The paintings were elaborate. The pictures, the writing, the architecture, the buildings, all of the little extra features. You know, when you looked at a mantelpiece, it wasn't just a straight flat piece of wood. It had all sorts of curls off it and vines and flowers and everything else, everything dripping off it. Lady Gaga would have fitted right in during the Baroque time. But it wasn't always kind of glory and glamour and things. How people lived. People didn't have electricity. There was no indoor toilets. And your cooking was on a fire. And your lighting was by candlelight. A lot of people um, ate meat, game and fish. Poor people used to eat porridges and stews and breads. And they actually used to turn the water into beer so that it would purify the water. It was a very weak beer. But it was the most common, common drink that there was. Cakes and puddings were really, really popular. Um, and also in Scotland, we have a word that we use here. We, we say the word peace. So when it comes to break time in school and you get your sandwich, we call it a play piece. So your play piece, have you had your piece today? What that means is it's a piece from the porridge drawer. In Scotland, we used to have a drawer in our kitchen. We would pour porridge into it. And then every single day when you got to work, your wife would chop you a piece out of it and she would give you a piece. And that would be your snack for your lunchtime as well. And that's a word that's still carried over all the way from 1600 is a piece. A piece and jam. That's my favorite break time snack. Apart from beer being a very popular drink because the water was so dirty and polluted and things, also coffee had just made an appearance. The first ever coffee house opened up in London in 1652. J.S. Bach, the composer, loved it so much he even wrote an entire cantata all about how lovely coffee was. Fashion at the time was crazy. People used to wear white powdered wigs, big elaborate wigs. Like I said, Lady Gaga before, that kind of big, massive, crazy wig. They were powdered to keep them styled and to keep them fresh. But the, what they used to use to style them, instead of hair gel or hair wax that we have nowadays, not that I know what that is, I don't use any of that stuff, um, we used to use pig fat. We used to put pig fat in to style our wigs and eventually it would go rotten and it would absolutely stink. And that is why perfume was invented. Perfume was invented as a small necklace with a little bulb on with lots of herbs and spices in to mask the smell of the rotting pig fat from your wig. You also had lice in these wigs as well and when people were dancing and these big, big wigs would flop about, they would touch each other and the lice would jump from wig to wig. And if you had a lice infestation in your wig, what you used to have to do was go and get your wig boiled, re-pig fatted and also shave your head. If you committed any of the following crimes during the Baroque period, murder, conspiracy, robbery, theft and treason, you were punished with the death sentence by hanging. 
Witch hunts were still really common and people found guilty were tortured and put to death. The last witch in Scotland that was put to death was in 1727. She was the last one in the whole United Kingdom. Our famous music composers at the time were Johann Sebastian Bach, Antonio Vivaldi and George Frederick Handel. Handel was German but lived in London. He was an incredible guy. His music is very beautiful. It uses the style of the time but does not go over the top. He keeps it subtle. He hated it when people went over the top with his music and put lots of extra bits in. In fact, there's even stories about his house in Brook Street in London, which is now like a very posh handbag shop. But in that house, he actually hung a lady who was singing for him. He hung her by the ankles out the window and shook her until she agreed not to put any extra notes into his music. He also shot a bassoon player on the leg. Our trumpets at the time had no buttons, so everything was very high up, so we used to have to play where all of the harmonic series was close together. The original trumpets were very long, but if we look at this P bugle, this is basically what our trumpets look like. And we could play the following notes. But to play tunes, we had to play super high. So where we get our notes coming together high up, that's where we had to play all the tunes. So playing trumpet was a massively, massively t challenging and tough skill. Hope you enjoyed this quick discussion on the Baroque period. I hope you enjoy playing Clark's trumpet tune. It's an absolute classic for playing at weddings. Even Princess Diana walked down the aisle to this one. I hope you enjoy playing it and uh, I will see you next time when we talk about classical music and more importantly, the crazy guy that was Mozart.